Hi everyone, my name is Sean Goash, and in this video I'd like to talk to you about one of the new generators I've created for Yeoman called Generator SAS Boilerplate. This is a generator that can easily create new styles for your upcoming web project. Basically, it's a project based on Yeoman, which allows you to scaffold out new applications, but specifically for generating styles in the form of .scss or SAS in your new project. So let's get started. Uh, first things first, you need to make sure you have Node installed. If you don't have Node installed, just uh, head on over to nodejs.org and pick up the latest version of Node from the download section. Uh, if you're on Windows, make sure you have you restart your computer. If you don't restart, then uh, you might have some issues accessing Node. So please restart on Windows. Otherwise, uh, just head on over to here and make sure you have Node. And once you have Node installed, you can follow these directions here. Basically, uh, first thing after you do that, then you need to install a generator. So uh, npm install g generator. Once you do that, it'll grab the uh, latest version of the generator and install it globally. That's why you need the dot, the dash g there, so you can use, you can scaffold out applications on any folder you want. And next, next you need to uh, make sure you have the uh, SAS libraries installed, and those three are the following. First of all, you need to have first you need to make sure you 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 make a you know uh, you have admin rights, so you have to go sudo su type in your password. Then you go gem install uh, suzy, and that'll grab suzy, which is a required component. If yeah, you have to use it; it's part of the grids. The second part you'll need is compatimation. If you want, if you want animations, you actually don't have to if you don't, if you're not using compatimation. So, uh, but uh, just to be safe, right? You you never know. Finally, breakpoint. Breakpoint allows you to do uh, media queries. Great. Uh, so now you can uh, CD into a folder or create one. So uh, I just created one for you, but uh, just in, for the, the the sake of doing. It. So next we have to create a folder. Uh, so basically, create a folder. Uh, test. Once you do that, uh, go ahead and go to yo, or you can do two things. You can either go yo, or go yo sas boil. You can go yo and choose your, so you can go yo and choose, um, sure. You can go yo and choose the sas boilerplate, or you can just go yo uh, sas boilerplate. So I'll do that and ask me project name, uh, test or sample project. Um, would you like to do a subscription? Uh, description, um, this description and it asks you for your name. Uh, so this this is always this is going to be in the front of every file. So if I go back to what it actually is going to look like, this is what it looks like here at the top. You get your author, you get your www URL, your GitHub, and your Twitter, as well as copyright and other information. So I go back. Let's keep it that way. Which is my URL. Yep. And company name, sure. And uh, what I like to include basic style. So this is just a basic style sheet to get you started. You can opt to remove that later. You're not necessarily bound to that. So yes, uh, this is an Icomoon vector font. It means you don't have to use images, and you can just use icons and scale them up or down and style them more easily. So usually that's a yes. And you could also customize these later using the Icomoon service. It's free, and you can just up upload your own vectors and then use those. So that's pretty cool. And then you can use animations. Animations are nice, and the cool thing about compatimation is. You can just um, it comes with delays, so you can actually set which which thing appears first, which can help draw attention to different parts of your page. I'll show that in a minute. Yep. And would you like to include nav styles? Sure. Uh, reset. That's usually a yes. Sometimes you may not want to. Type style sheet. Sure. Form style sheet. Yes. And now it just created all these files here. So uh, it says Icomoon fonts as well as the config file for Ruby. So if I head on over, I can uh, I can actually open it. So. Uh, Let's go open it on the side of this. So file open um, the directory. Just going to go one level up here and go to uh, its test generator, I believe. Yes. Let's create a new window here. So uh, this is what we just generated right here. So um, so we have our package.json file. That is just that has our sample project name. Uh, that this is for um, 
this is for Bower, I believe, and then um, this here is config.rb. This basically says what you're going to require. If you didn't ask for compatimation, it's not going to be there, et cetera, et cetera. This is uh, basically a file that tells you what your what your uh, settings should be for coding standards. So if you're you, if you if you have an editor that supports this, it'll basically set the settings so that you don't have to worry about what's what the settings should be like indentation, curly braces, and so forth. The git ignore file is awesome because you don't have to worry about that in your new repository, especially for SAS because you, you might have a SAS cache folder and that'll just include that for you so you don't have to worry. Editor config, once again, same deal. Actually, yeah, so that's for a, that's for J, um, JS hint, I believe, yeah. So, and this is the file that I was just talking about. So it actually set this, uh, the description would appeal, would appear, I think somewhere else, but here it's basically, yeah, so sample project and so it shows you that it's an app and then it shows you that this is basically a, a sample description that's pre-written for each file. I decided to do that instead of having a, the description at the very top because that's kind of not explicit, explicit enough as having a, a direct explanation of what the project, what, what the file does. So for example, this is all styles in the file and uh, you can see all the imports. This is like the base file. And uh, then these are just partials. So that's, it's not gonna compile those files because you have an underscore prepended to the file name. And so, um, so all this happens. And when I go to variables, this is the neat part about it, right? So it has sample project padding. All these are, are set uh, according to the name that you specified at the beginning. So this is really nice. You don't have to worry um, about other variables conflicting with your own uh, style sheet when you create it. This is great, right? You don't have to worry about all those defaults that, for example, might be set. Um, and also note Canadian spelling, yay. And uh, as well as uh, all these variables are set by default, you can obviously override them later. So so all this is done for you and that's the advantage of using it as well. You have media queries, all this is set for you. Um, we use a grid system based on the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, basically you have two call, three call, four call, et cetera, so forth. So that's what the grids is here. So to start using this uh, library, basically you need to start compiling. So uh, open up a terminal and uh, just go to the location where you created that. Oops open up a terminal and uh, you can just go compass watch and uh, like so it will create that folder and uh, it will compile so we just saw that we created a style the CSS file you can go see the CSS file was just added and uh, like so we can see the uh, that it was minified so ready for production and we can reformat to see what it looks like so um, basically added everything that we had, compiled it down, and, um, and did all the dirty work for us. So we don't have to combine all the, the things with extends. That's one of the other things that are really good about my uh, library is uses extends so you don't have to repeat all those mix-ins. Uh, you can see that when you look into the uh, helpers, you have all these different mix-ins, and you can see that it's, um, for example, large margin just has one margin around everywhere, margin top, margin bottom. Then you just extend those and you can uh, more efficiently uh, use CSS. You don't have to, you don't have to repeatedly repeat uh, margin top one. It also allows you to more easily scale it. So if you wanted to increase your margin, that's easy. You just go inside the variables, which once again are defined by the project name and you can set all this up. So, um, so all this is reflective, right? And, um, so this has been a tutorial on using the um, on using the uh, SAS boiler generator SAS boilerplate. If you have any questions, feel free to post at the bottom. Thanks for watching.